Welcome to Anime and Blender, a series where I break down how I made anime inspired renders step for step, all in Blender 3D of course. This one here is the 4 star Dragon Ball from the classic anime series Dragon Ball. I'd like to say that this is one of my favorite pieces that I've done this year as I think it manages to transform the style of anime to 3D quite well. I also had a lot of fun playing around with the physics simulations and the compositing which you'll see later on in the video. This is my first time doing a series like this so if you liked it tell me in the comment section below or leave a like. I love getting messages from people on Instagram or in the comments so yeah. Also at the end of the video there'll be a sneak peek for the next episode so you want to stick around for that or you can jump to the end. I really don't mind. Last thing if you like the music you're hearing check out the creator Kylo as always making good music that you don't want to miss out on so link in the description below. Anyway let's start the video. So we can start off by deleting the default cube. Hakai. First off, we will create the stars for the Dragon Ball by adding in a circle, then changing the vertices from 32 to 10. Then select alternate vertices like this, scale it down, and now we have our star shape. To make our star 3D and not flat, we'll extrude it upwards, then add in an edge loop. Next, we'll merge the top edge loop to form a single vertex, and then we'll do the same for the bottom edge loop. So now we have our complete 3D star. This is just an optional step, but you can also bevel the entire star to make it a bit smoother. Now we'll add in our Dragon Ball, which is just a UV sphere, and then we can duplicate our stars to make the 4 star Dragon Ball. For the next section, we'll be creating the pillow that the Dragon Ball rests on. This will require us to do three physics simulations. The first for creating the pillow, the second for indenting the ball onto the cushion, and then finally the last one for the pillow sitting on the surface or the floor. Don't worry if this sounds complicated, it's really not. Just follow the steps and you'll be fine. So first off, we'll add in a plane, press W and subdivide it 10 times. Then we'll extrude it up ever so slightly on the z-axis. For the cushion to work we need the edges to be sealed so that there's a pocket of air. So we can go to the top, press select, select sharp edges, and it will select all of the edges on screen here. Press S, Z0 to make the vertices touch. Then I'll press spacebar to open the search menu. This might be F3 for you. And I'll type in merge by distance. Now we can go into the physics tab and choose cloth simulation. Scroll down to the pressure tab, enable it, and then pick a value for the pressure. You'll need to adjust this depending on the size of your cloth, but I chose a value of 0.4. So if you press play on your timeline, this is what happens. You can see the simulation working, but we can make it better by adding in a level 2 subdivision surface modifier to the pillow and placing it above the cloth simulation. This will give a higher resolution simulation. So once we play back the animation, it should look like this. Oh. So if this happens to you, go to the physics tab and decrease the vertex mass to something much lower like 0.01 and it should be working. I enable shade smooth, then I apply both modifiers, making sure to apply them from top to bottom or else you get something looking like this. Yikes. Now for the ball indentation. I struggled to figure this out, but luckily I found the perfect video by Adam Scruven. Sorry if I pronounced your name wrong. It was wonderfully explained and it helped me a lot. So what you need to do is enable collision to the Dragon Ball in the physics settings and place it slightly above the cushion. And that's it for the Dragon Ball. Then once again, you'll need to add a cloth simulation to the cushion. This time we'll be leaving all the values the same, but this time we'll be changing the gravity, which is found at the bottom of the physics tab from 1.00 to minus 0.2. This will make the cushion float upwards and into the ball. Play the animation, making sure you start from frame one and the ball should be interacting with the cushion quite nicely. Pick a frame that you're satisfied with, then apply the modifier to the cushion. And if you want, you can add in another subdivision surface modifier. I pretty much do the exact same methods for the bottom of the cushion, but making sure that the gravity is positive so that it is falling into the floor and ensure that the floor also has the collision property enabled. So that's it for all of the physics simulations. So we can move on to setting up the scene. I set up the camera for the scene. So what I do is clear the rotation and location by pressing Alt R and Alt G. And then I move it to be placed right in front of the Dragon Ball. For scenes like this, I like to increase the focal length of the camera and kind of bring it back until the center of the ball is kind of the main attraction of the scene. What helps is to put composition lines, which you can find in um, the camera settings, which gives me a sense of how the uh, scene will kind of turn out. With the floor and edit mode, I extrude it upwards, then bevel the corner so that we have this nice background for our scene. Then we can go on to adding the materials. 
The first material will be our cushion. I didn't really do much for this. I just found a fabric texture online and with node wrangler enabled, I pressed control shift T, which will plug all of the right nodes into the right sockets to get our fabric texture. I'll link the exact material in the description below. To get the color I wanted, I added a hue saturation value node to the material to get the cushion to look purple. Next was the material of the Dragon Ball. I should mention that I am using cycles. I rarely ever do, but for a scene that heavily hinges on lighting, I decided that this would be the right option. I wanted to make the Dragon Ball have a glowing aura, but also still make it look like it's made out of glass or something translucent. It took a lot of experimenting, but I was happy with the results in the end. I'll put the finalized notes on the screen in a moment. I just want to go over a few key details of this material. So the most complex part was the separation between the glow and the rest of the ball. The left hand side here is essentially the driving factor behind this. By using the layer weights node and combining it with a noise texture, I got this really cool wavy effect on the aura. And then using some glass and glossy shaders, I kind of mishmashed them together to make it look like it is on screen now. I probably didn't explain that the best, but uh, here's all the finalized notes. After that, I give the background a dark gray color and decrease the roughness down to like a 0.05. After the Dragon Ball was finished, all I had to do was set up the lighting. I added in one area light and positioned it fairly close to the ball so that there was a reflection on the Dragon Ball. It may not look so good right now, but after some compositing, it will be a nice touch to the scene. Make sure to change the light shape from square to disc. This scene also works better if you decrease the world strength. One more light thing we need to do before we hit render is add in the spots behind the Dragon Ball so that this kind of increases the uh, emission of the scene. So I changed the radius so that it looks like a halo around the Dragon Ball and increased the strength just a tiny bit. So once we've done all that, we can hit render and move on to compositing. This is our scene without compositing. It's all right, but we can make it look so much better by going over to the compositing tab. We'll check use nodes and start the compositing. I'll make this part quick and then show you the final nodes at the end once more. So first off, I add in a color balance node to adjust the colors, of course, then two glare nodes set to fog glow. This may have been a mistake when I first did it, but it still works out. Then I add in a lens distortion and increase the dispersion to 0.12 for the chromatic aberration. For the vignette effect, I add in an ellipse mask and a blur node. I made the ellipse mask quite small and the blur node with relative mode enabled quite high. Then I combine this with the first branch with a multiply node, which will darken the entire scene, which makes it a bit more atmospheric and uh, mystical. The last branch of our compositing will be the sunbeams, which will add a bit more glow and shine to our scene. Three nodes for this, crop, sunbeam and color balance. The crop will ensure that the sunbeams are limited to a certain section of the scene which you can control by dragging the box. Make sure to increase the length of the sunbeams or else they won't show up. I use a length of 0.2 and position it at the top to shine kind of above our Dragon Ball, above and down on our Dragon Ball. And then finally, you'll want to add in another mix node, change it to screen, and then decrease the value to 0.2. So here's the finalized node setup. After this, you can hit render and hopefully you've got something like this. I had a lot of fun with this tutorial, um, playing around with the materials using cycles was kind of new for me and a bit out of my comfort zone, but I was really happy with the result. If you managed to get up to the stage or managed to finish it, I would love to see it so you can send it to me on Instagram, which will be linked in the description below. Thank you very much for watching. If you had any questions, of course, you can leave it in the comments because I always reply to my comments. But other than that, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. See ya. Ah, yes, there was one more thing. The next anime breakdown. So here it is. Yup, that's Minato's flying Rajin technique from Naruto. You want to know how to make this? Stick around, stay subscribed, and it'll be up soon. Alright, now I'm done, so see ya.